Thank you for coming. Um, so we're going to go ahead and bring out David and Emily. Thank you. Hello. I think that's Thank you. their congratulations on a great premiere, right? Because it was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That's so nice. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you so <laughs> much. Um, so, guys, I'm Sandra Gonzalez from Entertainment Weekly. Thank you for coming to this Q&A. You all just saw the awesome season premiere. Guys, first off, we have to talk about that last scene because as a fan, when I was watching it, I was like, thank goodness that scene was at the end because I was worried throughout the whole episode. <laughs> uh, talk to me about filming that, and, and were you as happy as I was to see that scene in the script? I think it's, it was a hard episode. Well, it's just it was very different because we're kind of miserable through the whole episode, so... <laughs> I Thank wasn't God, that miserable. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was semi miserable. <laughs> I, I was, had a lot I going was on. miserable, personally. Yeah, you were personally. Uh, no, you were emotionally well, you invested. Well, you know why we're not getting married. So you have that benefit. But um, it was just, we were so disconnected. And especially since we've gotten together, it was very strange to be doing this episode and be so disconnected from each other and be kind of sad the whole thing, during the whole thing. So, yeah, it was. Very nice to shoot that scene where, and, and a huge thing for Brennan, from my perspective, for Brennan to, to open up and, and, and take a leap of faith and, um, you know, believe, believe in Booth, believe that he has a reason. I tricked her again. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there you go. <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> I mean, how do we emotionally connect? Uh, it's interesting because... I, I love talking to actors. This is great. <laughs> I feel like I just want to. We get may to never that, leave tonight. It's kind of like <laughs> okay. that voice, you know, like there's that connection, that conflict. <laughs> that was your radio voice. The technique, that was yes, nice. Emily. That was nice. <laughs> um, no, it was a, it was a, it was extremely always for the, the start of that episode. It was it, uh, the first episode that you always shoot in the beginning of a, a season is always maddening because. There's so many elements that are involved, in it, especially with this one, with the emotions of the two characters where they're at, and and Booth knowing that he really wants to just tell her, God, it's pot, you know, and I can't do it, you know, and I got to hold that in, and um, it's a, it's, it's, it's interesting to see how the how the arc took off from the beginning to the end, and how he had to keep this secret from her, and it's, it was difficult for to to kind of play that and um but yet i think that he found some resolve at least at the end of this episode to be able to say hey you do have faith in me which i think is where the characters are now and where that goes from here is going to be very exciting mm -hmm. emily for you how was how challenging was it to play brennan in the way you played her in this episode because i thought it was very interesting she's a very methodical person and she kept trying to apply these methods to a real just emotion um can you talk about that a little bit uh, yeah, I think, you know, she's gone through such a journey in the nine seasons where she's opened up more and more, mainly because of her love of Booth. And, um, and I think when you love someone strongly, they change you. And so uh, Brendan has really um, started to open up and become vulnerable. And then you, you welcome in possibility of being hurt like she's become. So sh somebody who uses her mind to understand her emotions or anything in life, she uses her mind and logic. And it isn't until she can actually, it is in a way logic that gets her there because she learns to, to take information from before and extrapolate that Booth wouldn't be doing something like this unless he had a good reason. And so she does have some bit of evidence <laughs> But she still takes a big, big leap. I, I, I'm so confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love when you go on these little tangents. That's what kind of like, makes you just so right for this character. <laughs> it's such a great personal connection. Analytically analyzing uh, analysis. <laughs> that it's it's is amazing. <laughs> it drives me crazy. <laughs> Come on, Emily. <laughs> Real easy. It was a big, it's a big leap for for Brennan. So it was it was it's it's always a nice challenge and refreshing. How's that? Does That's that it's perfect. <laughs> it's nice. It's clean cut. 
Um, I love both your scenes with this priest character. Um, are we going to be seeing more of him in the next few episodes? And talk, talk to me a little bit how he works in between this dynamic between the two of them. Well, he's uh, someone from Booth's past, and he there's a, a relationship that they've had in the past and some dark secrets that they've been through, and I think it's the one character that Booth could actually talk to about all of this conflict and stuff he's done as a being a sniper in the past and who what he's seen and he's basically lived the horror with this character and he's he was great to work with so I think we'll see him down the line and someone who will play a, a, a part in his life and at the wedding that we're shooting right now so I think that you know being the priest he doesn't want to be the priest and here's with Booth and you know things are, are, are going to be interesting with him yeah. Yeah, he's a cool bridge between the two characters. Yeah, I mean, and you, you can see the sounding board. I mean, for Booth, he doesn't really have many people to talk to except this bobblehead doll on the desk sometimes. You know, he goes a bit crazy. And you, of course, darling. <laughs> well, I must say, you know, now that I get to come home to you, it's nice. Thanks. It's beautiful. But we're not talking in this past episode. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, as well, we're much talking, as we should. But as we're talking, but we're not talking. Uh-huh. It's aggressive, but it's uh-huh. passive aggressive. <laughs> we slam things around each other. We close doors a little harder. We shuffle around. I feel like I'm walking on eggshells. See, that's simple, Emily. It's right to the point. <laughs> it made no sense whatsoever. It but did, right? That's okay. <laughs> um, it's, she did make a leap at the end of the episode, but what about the other characters? Because Angela was like really mean to you in this episode. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You had a reason. Do I really need to take that heat? <laughs> well, I mean, I would come back reason. and say something, but I can't because Polan's around the corner. <laughs> He's watching me through the microwave. <laughs> He's in the light bulb above me. <laughs> He's in my shoes. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> so did the other characters sort of come around and do Eventually. The Eventually. Eventually, but it's a little hard. I think it's the hardest for Angela, and I think that's such a testament to what an amazing friend she is. And I, I've had that with friends where you're more upset about something that happens to them than even they are. <laughs> so you're mad at that person and you defriend de- uh, them. And, uh, but they are totally friends with them still. Are you making fun of me? No, no. I didn't know what? Imitation is the, is the, the highest form of flattery. Oh, right. I mean, okay. It really is. <laughs> That's how we work in our thing, you know? That's how we I'm going to keep an eye on you Don't give the times. secrets. So in the episodes to come, preview for me sort of what you see as their arc for the rest of the season and, and what kind of themes we're going to be hitting on in the next few episodes. Uh, I th- well, I think this the season is kind of about faith, I think, for me. I think uh, for a lot of characters, but Brennan obviously has to take these leaps, and we saw that first part <laughs> in this episode. Um, this and is really we just ha- about a paycheck for me to- now, guys. No. <laughs> 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 I mean, let's get real, shall we? we? I mean, come on. <laughs> we both have to learn to uh, trust. Um, I'm joking. <laughs> and have faith in Angela at a certain point in the season, and um, and it's Who's about Angela now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Michaela? Oh right. Okay. Right, right. The other. I just read. Oh Booth. Okay. Booth. 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 Fine. No one. No one. No one. Okay. Booth. 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 Where's my highlighter? Booth. Booth. Okay. I'm sorry. So you don't have to work with. This is terrible. <laughs> I take it very seriously. I know, and that's what I love about you. I am too. <laughs> okay, so we're on the topic of faith. Well, I don't know. I was trying to think of themes. But yes, we're, you know, we're getting married this season, which has been announced, and like you said, yeah. and so that's a huge thing. And, and uh, um, you know, our relationship is kind of the th- a theme of this season. I think it's th- great that season. we're having the wedding earlier versus later because I mean, it, we kind of jump the ship a lot of times. We did this with the, with the pregnancy and the child and... What, what they get together, they don't get together. It was this whole moonlighting curse thing. And, um, <laughs> right, I mean, what do you do with that? I mean, honestly, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, so I think it's, uh, it's interesting to see wh- how they're going to handle this. I mean, look, we're, we're, we're so fortunate to be in the season nine, get into season nine, and we're blessed. And, um, you know, to, it's hard enough to get a pilot. It's hard enough to get uh, any role. And when you get... You're, you're fortunate to get that. You just work in the moment. To see, you don't think about, like, oh, well, we're going to go to season six or seven, or, but to get to nine is pretty, pretty amazing. And um, so, why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm not laughing. I'm just, I was just re- thinking about how amazing it is that we it are is, making it, it to season nine. That's it's awesome. great. Yeah. Thank you. It's amazing. It's lucky. Very, very lucky. 
Yeah, we had a we when we were shooting last season the um, the end of the episode with the whole proposal. Remember in the rose garden? It was nice. Beef jerky. Yeah. David directed that episode. Oh, that for fun. those of you who've seen it, and uh, he did such a good job. And when we had the proposal scene, he sat me down before the scene. Um, he took a moment, just the two of us, and he's like, "I just want to." Talk about how amazing it is we've gotten to this point and that we've been doing the show for eight years and here we are sitting here and we're having a proposal scene and um, how incredible it is that these characters have gotten here, that we ourselves are just sitting here and how unbelievable that is. And it was pretty cool. It's going to be gushing. When we do the wedding, I'm going to be a mess. I'll be crying <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> I'll be so emotional. It'd be... <laughs> bones. You're going to have to... <laughs> You're going to have to ADR all your lines. Oh, I'll be weeping. a mess. <laughs> it's one thing I can do well is cry. <laughs> one thing. Come on. What's that? One thing. You also kick ass pretty well. I, I, I it's so. funny. We don't kick ass much on this show. You're a good driver. I, mean, I, I like to drive. <laughs> I'm a very good driver. That's true. I enjoy pulling up to a crime scene. <laughs> and all the grips are going, shit, he's coming again. Elby, it's his mark. I'm not just kidding. He's a very good driver. He can drive really fast and then like hit a mark that's that small. It's it's impressive. Thank you. It's one of my favorite things about you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, those times in high school, getting away from things. <laughs> drive, Dave. Drive. <laughs> Since you did bring up, you know, things that you like about him, what are some things you like about each other as actors? You know, nine seasons in, there's got to be like. A list of things that. What I mean, like, what, what do I like about Emily? Yeah, as an actor, or anything you're annoyed she about. Um, <laughs> well, what do you mean, like, just like enjoy the process? I mean, to be able to 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 go on a journey with someone uh, with this type of a show, you have to really kind of have trust in one another. And when we started the show, we worked with a great acting coach for five, six seasons straight. We worked every weekend on our script. We broke it down. We took story points. We, we worked the characters inside and out, and we wrote, rewrote what we wanted to do as, from the character's perspective. So we worked very in a trust world. It was a bubble of trust. We knew what we were thinking, where we were going into, and what we were dealing with, and that allowed us to connect to each other, and everyone's watching this going, oh my God, what the hell are they thinking about? Because I, this is nuts. But we're thinking about what we worked on, and that was a very important part for us to, to have that, to have someone who was like, hey, I'll go and work with you on the weekends. I'll go to the acting coach for two hours or three hours, take that time away, and, and build that trust. And that really helped us get through a lot of moments in these seasons. And, um, one of the things that I admire so much about Emily is her dedication to not only the craft, but herself as a person and just her love for family. And I've seen you grow since, you know, that person season when you walked in the room and we, you, we tested for the network. It was amazing. It's pretty amazing because our characters have, are building a family and we've uh, both, you know, had changes in our family. You have, you've had a daughter and I've had a son and... Just, it's pretty amazing to, you know, see that with each other and go through hard times and great times together and supporting each other through that. I, I would say it's just amazing and to trust somebody and to have a good relationship together. After all these seasons, you hear stories about actors on TV shows where they won't even talk to their co-star. Well, there are times I don't want to talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, yeah. I mean, I think it's very well documented. But you talk, you I tell, tell her. <laughs> Shit, I'll come in and say, Emily, you're pissing me off today. But you what say wrong that side of the bed did the you difference. get off of? I mean, shit, <laughs> chew me a new asshole, but baby, I'm coming right back at you right now. Don't start. Just because my eggs weren't soggy. Don't come bouncing on my plate. Thing. You come and say that to me, or I say it to you. We actually do say, like, hey, you're bothering me. You're annoying me right now. <laughs> yes, so that's kind of true. leave me alone today. Or that's I'm in a bad true. mood. Just leave me alone or something like that. But, um, yeah, no, that's true. We're, 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 it's, it, it, that's helped, you know, and you know, that's, that's helped me. And then I go to my trailer, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> da da this is fun up here. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of cool. <laughs> right. I can go on about David, but you probably want to ask more questions. Yeah. But yes. I, I would say one of the top things, I'll just say this. 
that I love about David as an actor is he really is in the moment all the time. And I know that that's something we like always want as an actor is to really be present. And he really, he is in his life and he is in his work. And he's really like sinks into that moment, whatever it needs to be. And he's present. And I, I just, um, I love that. And so many, I always am trying to do that. And I'm not <laughs> so good at it. But oh, it's you're great. great at it. Are you kidding me? Oh, no. But, uh, and you keep it light, which is great too. Mm -hmm. After when, when, not when you don't need to. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. We can keep going. After this many seasons, is there a moment that you like remember, like as actors, like sharing that really stands out as a highlight to you? Oh God, there's so many moments that you there's have so that you can think ones. about. I mean, you just go back and the the, the ones that kind of pop out always. I mean, I've been shooting the pilot and in the gun range when she came up. Is that your gut talking to you? I mean, there is there's these small little moments that you have. Um, that just in, are impactful to you and you recognize that moment. And there are others that you just don't and they just kind of, they're fleeting. And it's, a t it's tough because I remember the undercover episodes, which I loved. I loved the circus episode. I, I love that. I love coming out like Boris the Russian guy, you know, <laughs> being flames of glory. And, you know, or the silly things too, when I'm chasing this guy around with a freaking helmet, di diving into a pool, Gormagon, well, who's that guy? <laughs> That was just wrong and bad television, I thought, <laughs> personally. I, I mean, you have these moments that are good and bad, and that's just the way it is. But you remember them. And, you know, I, I think there there's so many moments I, I can think of being at the bar, and I was, like, pissed off, and I was just like, you know, I'm done with all this. You know, I, I, like, I li like those heavy moments, and they're good. But I'm not a big reunion guy, so I don't like reunions. I don't really like them. <laughs> Not, I don't like them. I, you know, I don't like going back to my high school reunion. All right, let's go on to another moment. topic. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm off base. So let's go. <laughs> well, you mentioned undercover episodes. You all have one coming up after this one. Like, it's yeah, the second episode. Yes. Tell me about that. Oh, wow. Well, we go undercover <laughs> at a couple's retreat, and we go... <laughs> as we, Tony and Roxy. As Tony and Roxy, who How you doing? did a little while. <laughs> It's nice. I get all cheesed out. I got these purple <laughs> shoes I'm coming out. How you doing? <laughs> it's and good as times. Usual, we are the most conspicuous people around. We stand right <laughs> out. And Any, we're, anytime we go undercover, we're we stand so, out. We stand out so badly. It's like the really worst undercover ever. It is it's bad. Like, it's awesome. Oh, it's so bad. It's good. <laughs> it's so awesome. It's a lot of fun to do the undercover for sure, and we're these. You know, we kind of have like a New Jersey Italian thing going on for the yeah, and, and then the uh, Brent. What's the, the gentleman from Cheers? What's his name? Uh, who pays a oh visit? Oh my gosh! Plays Normie. Normie. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. He come. Thank you. My He's mind. hilarious. He was classic. We were doing a sweat lodge scene, and um, <laughs> it was myself and him to the right. We were in robes, sweating with. Two other gentlemen that were working out their issues. Obviously, we, I don't have to get into what their issues were, but they were fine. I mean, they were great, and uh, they started to get a little close to each other at the end of the scene, and his reaction was priceless. He just got up. <laughs> guys, guys, guys. <laughs> just the way he said it was priceless. And he uh, was great. So we, there are some really great guest actors that have come on our show that have, some have gone on and, and gotten their own shows or have, they are, are working in other films and it's it's so great to see guest actors come on and become successful. I think it's such a great thing to see that. I love that. I love having someone come in and you know really go into a scene and just dig it, you know? Just dig in there and just have fun and <laughs> dig, in. dig in, you know? <laughs> Get dirty and just and then they they become very successful. I love that. Bones has been an amazing launch pad for a lot of actors. Just from your perspective as stars, is there something that guest stars can do that, that, or that has ever impressed you or a guest star that you remember really impressing you that went on to do something? Well, so many um, impress me all the time. But, I mean, then, but when you notice people like uh, Eric Stone Street did two episodes of Bones before he did Modern Family, Aaron Paul, Giancarlo Esposito did an episode. I mean, you know, some of these people have done stuff before, obviously. Um, but then you go and you see them doing incredible work on other shows, and um, that's pretty great. And I, I don't know, I, I love the fact that the show's been on for so long, I can watch other shows and watch different things, and you know, I'll know half the people <laughs> doing stuff. I'm like, oh my, I know him, I know him, I know her. 
Their so, agents so. are like, you got the bones. <laughs> no bones. It's a launching pad. <laughs> Everyone in town's doing bones. I, I don't know if Bones has anything to do with anyone in success afterwards, but we've been we've been That's lucky true. to have some great actors on the show that that have had success in other places before and after. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of guest actors, tell me about Freddie Prinze Jr. We saw him in this in this. Yeah, yeah he was awesome. Yeah, he um, did we a, saw just a bit of him. So uh, preview yeah. for me a little bit about a little bit of a think. tease character coming on. He'll do another arc. I think he will have him back. Obviously, he works for the CIA. I'm with the FBI, and then you can the conflict and the you know who's better. Army, Navy, <laughs> that kind of a thing. <laughs> Who's going to outweigh the conflict there? And so we'll see how that develops. But he was great to to come on, and it just happened. I mean, uh, that that role just kind of came around because I was at out vacationing with my family at a hotel and ran into Sarah Michelle Gellar and Freddie Prince and was talking to them. I said, "You'd be great for this role." And it's casting just, director. I know. Yeah, right. <laughs> As well. Producer, actor, casting director. Casting director. <laughs> Thank you very um, much for coming. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, you were great. Thank you. You've all brought resumes and headshots tonight. You did a great job. You, you, David you, will be I staying here for about two hours afterwards. Thank you very much. So we'd love to see we'll you. We'll do some all. monologues up here. <laughs> be nice. You're welcome I to love do that. one now. I mean, <laughs> let's do some monologues. <laughs> were you on target? Were you focused? <laughs> Um, let's go ahead and jump to some audience questions because we got some really great ones here from right. everybody. Um, this one's from someone named Catherine to both of you. How has the decision for your characters to become romantically involved changed your chemistry? Interesting. Um, you know, we, we, we work, like I said earlier, so with the, the moment of the two of us and having that trust thing. I, I think that that actually elevates the, the chemistry, if anything, because you know where the other two are coming from. If it was the other way around, I think that it would be a bit maybe unknown and kind of strange. But the fact that we're just so secretly kind of trustworthy with each other, know where we're coming from into a scene, that it kind of helps. Wouldn't you say so? Uh, yes, I would. I like secret trust, secret trustworthy. Is that what you said? It's nice. It's a what new book. <laughs> <laughs> um, secret trustworthy. Yeah, I think that it was. I, I think that was. Uh, you know, when I, I I got pregnant basically, and then oh really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got wow. knocked up, and they decided to write it into the show. As I told them from the beginning, I wasn't going to be like one of those tiny skinny people that doesn't gain weight when they're pregnant. So um, <laughs> so they wrote it in. Thank God. Um, and, um, and so they decided that it had to be Booth's child. And so we went through different <laughs> things. Well, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Not in real life, just on the show. Okay. So, <laughs> although some people may think that my child is David Boreanaz, it's not. It's another David David's. Hornsby. Um, but, <laughs> but anyways, so they decided that it had going, to be. Just keep going, just keep going. I'm just going to say focus just and ignore going. you as usual. <laughs> Um, so they decided that it would be Boots, that it had to be Boots, and then um, I think that it actually, I was felt so depressed that I changed, that I, you know, messed up the show, and then they had to put it together, and, and I didn't realize that my pregnancy was going to change it so much, and then, you know, you worry about the moonlighting curse, because everyone says, if you get together, the show will, you know, be ruined. So I think that it actually was a great thing, because in the end, even though I went through a lot of turmoil and felt bad about it, but... Uh, <laughs> I got pregnant. You can't, you know, what are you going to do? But, um... Have the baby? <laughs> but, um... But, what was I going to say? Oh, but anyways, I think it was a great thing because it wasn't like then we started courting for a while and then we might get married or something like that. It was like, oh, we have a one-night stand and we're pregnant. We're going to raise a child together. And now it changes the dynamic of the characters in a totally different way. And, and it's another platform for us to explore the differences in our character. Like, mm -hmm. do we baptize our child? Um, and now with getting married, it's like, do we get married in a church? Is it a pre you know, things like that and where you make compromise and so, and where we can kind of bicker as our characters. And so I think it actually was a good thing in the end, even though I went through turmoil about it. Yeah, you kind of did the show a favor. You gave them like a clear path to beat the boon later. Right, right. Go, Emily. There you go. Yeah. You're welcome. Go. <laughs> Television. <laughs> TV. Welcome, Hollywood. <laughs> I got pregnant. <laughs> and I did it. <laughs> well, you did it. <laughs> this well, not me, but Emily did it. <laughs> yeah, why are you taking credit? I don't know. I like the voice. <laughs> 
too. It's good. Um, this one's from Priscilla to both of you. Um, how do you approach your characters differently now that you've been doing the show for so long? That's kind of the, if you want to hit. Well, uh, again, it's so moment to moment. And I, I, I answered this somewhat yesterday with some, one of the reporters going into the ninth season and saying to yourself, how do you make this character fresh? And why do you, how do you make it so spontaneous? And I think you have to use what's around you. You have to kind of use the moment rather than what's prescribed. Because, okay, it's easy. He's an FBI guy. He's got a cocky belt buckle, crazy socks. He plays with pens, and he goes in and dice, and he screams and hollers. Or he complains with Emily. Okay, well, what, what's underneath all that? Where is he coming from? What's the moment? What's he feeling like today? I think that that's the challenging aspect for the character, is to make him always raise the bar. Mm -hmm. Don't lower the bar. Always raise the bar. Don't look in the past. Make the bar higher and higher for each scene. Mm -hmm. Because that's, the, what, what, that's what we do. That's what I do. I don't... I don't want to just rest, put my feet back up and say, hey, you know, I'm going to go over to craft service and have, a, you know, this and that and then start looking around and being like, you know, oh, I got this guy. It's no big deal, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm talking like that. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I got to play an Italian guy that some of these days. You, know? you did. I did, right? <laughs> we were Tony. But that's why you were I, being a little Tony. I was a little bit. Well, yeah. Tony's. It's a not exactly Tony, but it's kind of Tony. Kind of, but not in a different way. I don't know who I, I was channeling. I think the great thing about doing a TV show is that you get to explore a character over such a long period of time. Well, especially a show that lasts this long. But uh, you get to explore a character over so, a long period of time so you can really see them grow and change and sometimes very slowly, <laughs> in my character's case, and, and grow and change. And I think that my character has opened up a lot um, over the last several seasons. And I think that um, we're never, hopefully, you know, we're always changing things and we're always, uh, uh, our characters are evolving in a way that makes sense that their core self is still there, but they're evolving. Um, in a way, because of the, their relationship with each other. Mm -hmm. This one's from Leanne to Emily. Um, how do you go about oh, go to the bathroom then, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a long one. Um, oh, how to go bad. No. <laughs> that wasn't a comment on your bathroom. That was a comment on how... Oh, <laughs> See, this is how we would start the scene. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> exactly <laughs> like that. And action. Uh, How do you go about memorizing cut. so much? <laughs> I don't like being cut. No, um, not you. No, 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 no. no you're not you. Good, you're not cut. Good. Um, how do you go about memorizing so much scientific technical data for your lines? I mean, after nine seasons, does it just kind of come out? Or are you like half scientist? Some uh, things are much easier than... <laughs> I am half scientist at this point. <laughs> um, some things are more difficult than others. And it's such a funny thing, as you guys know, as actors. People will say, how do you memorize lines? I've heard that forever. And it's always like, that's the least, that's the least of our problems as actors. Like, that's like just basic stuff. But on this, doing a show like this, it's not the smallest <laughs> problem <laughs> that I have. So um, my, uh, the way I just have a technique, I mean, not a real technique, but I, I, I only, I memorize the day before I do uh, the scenes, um, because if I learn them farther in advance, I'll forget them or I'll have to learn too many. So I do it day before, and um, and then they go out of my head after that one day. But uh, after doing the show, you know, there's certain things that I, uh, certain words that I repeat, but then you get used to saying it one way, then you have to change it and say, you know, you want to say it the way you said it two seasons ago or two episodes ago. But anyway, so, you know, I just basically learn them the day before, and it's, become kind of a science in its own way, but yeah. You like to run answer. lines. I don't like to run lines. I know. He doesn't like to run lines, so I, I have to run them by myself. No, I, have an, I have an assistant who helps me. You have an assistant? I do. That's amazing. <laughs> Nine seasons and I haven't have gotten an assistant her? yet. Have you met her yet? She's very nice. <laughs> um, this one's to both of you. What's the grossest thing you've ever seen come out of the prop department? There's a lot to choose from. <laughs> There's a lot to choose from. There's an episode that's airing this season where we took the skin off a head, oh. the face off a head, like it was a whole fresh head. <laughs> fresh, fresh face. Sure, fresh, fresh face. Head. <laughs> Real fresh face. Yeah. And um, that Ooh. was pretty nice. I don't think you were in that scene, were you? No, I, I, I'm, you missed I'm that just, beauty. Well, I don't do all that stuff. I just go walk around with a badge and a gun, and I cause problems. You Why am I going? I'm no scientific jar. Yeah, I show up, it's there, it's that, and I go home. 
Wait, it's, it's, yeah, you do see, yeah, there's a lot of goop. What about the one where it fell off the body? Well, there was one, uh, I don't know what, it, what it was the liquefied body in the bathtub. That was yeah. pretty nasty. That was really gross. Um, they're very good at doing really gross bodies on bones, obviously. It's part of the allure of the show. Yes. Um, this one's from Jackie to both of you. David, you recently posted on Who Say a picture with Glenn Quinn, who's gone much too soon. In light of his tragedy, how do you stay grounded in this crazy business, and what keeps you both sane? What keeps you both grounded? Well, for me, personally, it's... Um, I think the, 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 you know, social media is such a... That keeps you grounded. Well, no, social no, media. no, God, no, Jesus. Oh, wow. Yes, it keeps me grounded. Just Twitter. It's just Twitter. <laughs> this keeps you so grounded. Twitter and Facebook make me whole. Oh, God. Um... <laughs> Uh, for me, it's ice hockey. I, I, I like to play ice hockey. I like to skate. I like to be physically active. So when I'm out on the ice skating, I get into this white void kind of place, and I feel like I'm flying. And I just kind of, that's my, that's my place where I feel like I can't think of anything, because if I do, I'll get hit in the face with a puck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very uh, peaceful for me to go out and skate mm -hmm. or be outside or, you know, cook. I like to cook. I like to garden. I've got some great herbs in my garden. Some fresh basil, some mint, <laughs> oregano, some sage. I don't know why people find that funny. <laughs> I, I've always loved to cook. <laughs> I think it's because we can't I, imagine I like, food. I like lawns. You know, I like, to, I like to hike. I like to be outside. I like to swim. <laughs> Doing a lot of stuff on <laughs> not a lot of time off. That's what I want to know. Good times. Your secret, David. Good times. Um, what else do I like to do? I like to drink wine. Yep. So does Brennan. Good. Brennan, it, she's always drinking that fake wine on the show. Which is gross oh. to me, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of rough. Good. Yeah, but you know, you, you have your outlets, Emily. <laughs> Drugs. That's what I do. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I like I, I right now. I'm spending time with my son, who's almost two. I just um, that's uh, that definitely keeps me grounded for sure. And, and I tired. Love that. And tired. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like sure. the job also makes you tired. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, yeah, basically, I have a garden too, and I have all of those herbs as well. Do you have the herbs? I do. It's very exciting. I've killed the cilantro though. You killed it? Not on purpose. <laughs> so bad. You killed the cilantro? Uh, yep. That's and bad. the zucchini. Zucchini, too. you killed. Did you kill They're zucchini? <laughs> I killed the zucchini. That's okay. We have a room I, for you yeah, in the I back. I was not consistent about watering. It's all right. Don't worry about I got, it. I had to go to work and, you know. Did you guys want to hear more about gardens? Because I could go. <laughs> this is actually the Gardener's Guild. That's what you don't know. Perfect. Yeah. And we were talking about acting a lot too much. <laughs> Way too much. They're so bored, yeah. Um, so Laura has a question for both of you. Um, what is the most challenging experience you've encountered on the show? I guess it's like actors. Oh, wow, the, the, there's so many different challenges that we kind of come across with scenes and episodes that we, I find to be always, um, you know, challenging. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> challenges that are challenging. Yes, um, you know, it's it's uh, you know, you have to manage your time a lot. Obviously, that's a challenge. You have to really know where you are in the scope of things and how much time you have and. You know, because television can be very, it's a fast-paced dynamic, and you have X amount of hours to shoot, six and a half, seven, eight, eight pages some days. And the, the challenge is to really kind of make sure that you're getting the scene and not doing because you've got to get your day. The worst thing I hate is when you're on a set and you're working and you have the eight second AD come in and he's got a call sheet in his hands and he's pushing calls. That drives me crazy because it's like this is, this is a platform for us to operate and work and find our scenes. I don't really care if you got to push a call or who's going to get pushed. So it's a big challenge to be able to get the moments, I think, always, because you can't, it's there. You don't want to walk away from something that you don't feel like you have. It's going to take an extra hour to do it. You should take the extra hour to do it. Um, so that's a big challenge. Emily? I was, I was just thinking, I was just listening. I wasn't really thinking. I don't know. I, I, pass, pass. <laughs> I like that, pass. Would you like to phone I a friend? I haven't used a pass yet. <laughs> yes, I have I one like pass remaining. 
I have one pass. I haven't used my pass yet. Um, this one actually, this is... Pass. <laughs> Next question, please. It was for you, but... No, I'm just kidding. Um, this is actually for you. I wasn't kidding. Um, in what way... Pass. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You can't take my pass. Pass. Um, in what ways do you think you are like Seely Booth, and which ways do you think you're unlike him? Well, I mean, Booth is, uh, he's a very religious man. I think I've lost some of my religious faith in the past few few years. I, I, I was raised uh, Catholic, and, uh, you know, it was, to me, it was all what Booth has, and it's what David kind of has and doesn't have. Um, you know, I don't, I don't carry around pens that undress themselves and dice in my pocket. I'm not a, a gambler or a recovering addict of, of, of gambling anonymous and of having problems with that. Um, he's, uh, Booth's a very charming guy. I think I'm very charming. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that would be a check mark in the David Booth. <laughs> he's got a dashing smile, another check mark. He's very deep, check mark. He's very stylish in his own kind of way. Check mark. I, shall I continue? <laughs> I don't want to pass now. <laughs> this is kind of fun. What about you, Emily? I'm How not do done yet, that? lady. <laughs> Socks. Check. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you can go on you now, look Emily. You a lot alike. Yeah, I look just like Booth. You look a lot like Booth. <laughs> like, wow, it's Booth. <laughs> uh, what's like, what, um, hmm, uh, I take things literally sometimes like Brennan does. Um, I feel like there's a lot of things that are different about Brennan. I don't, I hope I'm not as socially awkward as she can be or as rude as <laughs> she can be in, a, in an endearing way. Um, Very endearing. <laughs> um... I'm not nearly as smart as she is. Um, uh, I'd say the taking things literally is probably like the most that the most way ways we're like. What most way we are like? <laughs> See, I'm not as smart as she is. <laughs> <laughs> the most way we are alike. Yes. The most way we are alike. <laughs> okay. I <laughs> see me. <laughs> Next question. This one's to you. This one's to you. I read, well, this actually goes back to what you were talking about with uh, working with an acting teacher. Do you all still do that? That's what the question is. No, we don't anymore. Um, but I think we both took a lot from working with her and um, you know, Ivana Chebek. Uh, she's wonderful, and we had such an amazing time with her. And I think both of us, you know, uh, use what we've learned from her and from other teachers and from ourselves and our instincts and all that stuff that you do as an actor and um, and uh, kind of wing it. No, I don't know. <laughs> um, but we don't meet with her uh, now anymore. But I, I think we, we met with her for about five or six seasons every six single seasons, weekend. Six, so, seven seasons, um, yeah. At a certain point, you kind of know these characters. You know what they're thinking and feeling in certain situations and we do our own work on our own and we really made a connection it was great to have that time together and to really yeah. we bonded doing that too I mean, yeah, we do that worked. technique you know now we know like she'll do that technique well let's do that technique or let's do what let's 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 do this substitution here and let's get on the same wavelength on this one and see what we're going with that because you know ivana operates in a very interesting way and we uh we tapped into that pretty nicely Cool. Um, Scott, is, this is for both of you, just wants to hear a funny or fun experience from on set. Every day uh, is fun. There's not a day that doesn't go by that's not fun. You know what I miss? What? The fart machine. The fart machine. <laughs> oh, fart jokes. Isn't this exciting? Here you see a panel and let's talk fart jokes. No. Everyone loves flatulence. <laughs> no. The fart machine David was... had some fun with that. That was very funny. That was actually was a, a remote, remote control, control fart machine <laughs> that you can place anywhere, and you would just <laughs> hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Rehearsals, hit them up. <laughs> <laughs> not tell anyone. And people but, would turn around and not know. I'm it's, bringing the it's fart so machine dumb, back. But you know, I'm going to bring it, it back tomorrow. It's perfect it for the wedding because <laughs> this is priceless. 
when we <laughs> shoot the wedding, I am, I am instituting the fart machine. Not one, not two, three freaking machines. Three remote controls on booth at all levels. It could hit you up at any time. <laughs> this is exciting. I'm so pumped for this. <laughs> A blessing in disguise. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> who doesn't like fart jokes? There's a lot of people who don't. They don't. Yeah, they have issues. They got problems. <laughs> it's not talk not about us. It's not us. <laughs> Where, yeah, that's it. For me, it's the sun and the gods. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> When we when We're we real talk class. <laughs> when we oh, talk for going a up and down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what that sound was. No, uh, I'm yeah, glad no, I got it. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. That's well, when when we talked for a back to work spread in e Entertainment Weekly magazine, you were talking about singing, and that's what made me think of that just now when you were doing that little oh, sound. Yeah. Do you all still sing a lot on set also? Sing? Sometimes, sing. sometimes. I She's think always Eric, singing. Eric Milligan, who um, who played Zach Addy, oh. um, he, yeah. he, he was a big musical theater guy, so we would end up like singing the whole soundtrack to Annie and um, we're li literally we hanging on this we're, we're in we're hanging on the side of a like go, rappelling down a, a, a big huge stage wall and we're doing the scene and we have flashlights and we're all in black and he's singing hello Dolly he kept and spinning around too he like couldn't he was like spinning, spinning and around looking at his we flashlight he thought he down was in the middle of nowhere and he's like hello Dolly's around. coming out of his mouth <laughs> I'm like, slow down, Vandergilder. It's just, everyone, take a time out, you know? We do, some, we do sing on occasion. You know, somebody will bring it. And then you get the song in your head, and, you know, you're, you're, you're screwed for the next few days. Done. Um, cool. I think this is going to be our last question, actually. I know. Um, you've done the series for so long. Um, is there something you'd like to see happen um, as it, or, or let's say, hold on as an actor, or another character you yearn to play? What do you mean, in the, on the show? Like, I'd like I to play Bones. Yeah. <laughs> I've always thought it would universe. be fun to do an episode where we have to switch roles. No, I'm not saying that dialogue. <laughs> I'll pull my hair out. I, I, I'll, go, I'll go nuts. I will go bananas. I did that. No, 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 no. Oh, see no. how much harder I work? It's true. You see you know. what I mean? So you just oh, oh, okay. Let's see you twirl oh, some dice in a zippo words. and get in someone's face and get aggressive. All right, let's talk. Step for step. I call you out. <laughs> I think I'd I, be terrible at playing Booth. So no, I, you'd be great. I, I, I admit it. I, st I, I, I would love to do something with Booth. I'd love to do, like we we were gonna do this episode last year where he's where we got the makeup. He was gonna be old Booth, like really old dude. So maybe we'll do that. Yeah. I want to do that, and I also want to. I like to. I, you know, it's funny with me characters. I love character. I, I, I like. I would like to see Booth just become a little bit more, you know, in pain for some reason. I, I like examine his. <laughs> You're a masochist. <laughs> it's horrible, isn't it? <laughs> I'd like to see him just get sick. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be fun, you know? Why, why not? You know, like, hey, do like eight episodes where he's like struggling, maybe gets cancer or something. Like, he's something already had serious. A brain tumor. He's already had a brain, brain tumor. He had a, like, tumor. yeah, and I saw the dude from Family Guy. Cartoons. <laughs> you know, it's always fun to be able to do something like that. I mean, that's always great. Every actor wants to be like angry guy or, you know, or like conflicted, <laughs> you know, let's not eat for six months and like to, to starve ourselves. There's something cool about that. I don't know why. <laughs> I think that's fun. It's like an experiment. Like you push your body, how far you can go with a certain degrees with certain things. I, I find that fascinating. I, I really do. I, I think that's just a, it's a human spirit. There's a condition that we all have inside that spirit that we like to challenge it and kind of ignite it in, in certain areas and it gets you kind of like, it's, just, it's, a, it's a, an extreme high for an emotion like that. Whatever that emotion is, obviously. Maybe Booth will like tap into bodybuilding or something. Just, That's like, not happening now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe undercover will get the, you know. <laughs> no, no, that's not going to happen. Emily? You're already there. I'm already there. <laughs> so I can crush you this enable. mic. That's what it is. That's what's going on. <laughs> what about you, Emily? Anything you'd like to do or see? Oh, done do more stuff. We've done it all. I don't know. We've done so many things. And I kinda, I'm kind of like, a, I don't know. 
I'm a worker bee. I do what they tell me to do. So I don't know. I'm not that. A, 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 I don't have a huge vision for. What so you don't I want your hair do, to fall out and like b boots like kind of rescues you or something. No, it's like, I don't. Then you like suffer and you're in the hospital and then I don't know like something like you see spirit, ghosts. God no. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be fun like your twin that you never met. That might be interesting. That'd be, like how would a twin would be great and she's like totally opposite. Uh, like, like totally opposite. She's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It'd be great. I mean, so it fun. would be so great. Like she's like a bit like she's dumb. She doesn't know. What? So like, what do you mean? <laughs> that'd be amazing. Oh my God, I would love that. It'd be like it'd be so great. I would. That would be fun okay, to watch. I'd like to do that. Another alternate universe episode then. Yeah. That's what yeah. Eat, like. Yeah. That's you gotta what like shift like. up the mind a little bit. Go this. way. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so oh, thank you much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much for coming. Thank you. The premiere was awesome. And make sure you catch Bones on Mondays, guys. <laughs>